So our first meeting tonight is the Board of Liquor Control. And item one is uh, public comment just on anything that's not on the Board of Liquor Control agenda. Are you the Board of Liquor Control? No, no. we're the Board of Liquor Control. Okay. Right now. We're in public comment. So next is approval of the agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. New business 2019 liquor license renewals. <clears throat> We have several renewal applications that have been submitted. The first on your list should be for uh, Sap Restaurant in the uh, Randolph Road. We have not had any issues with this particular restaurant that has required law enforcement. Uh, so the town recommends, uh, or staff recommends approval of this permit. Are you doing it individually or are you doing it I don't think we've got any issues. No, no, there is one issue with one license, and that is related to uh, one main. Uh, however, that issue is not specifically related to the town. It's mostly internal. Uh, there are there have been some noise complaints by the residents above the restaurant. Uh, we, the town, have engaged the residents and have also engaged the property owners. And we've determined that it's not an issue that the town needs to be involved in because it is an internal private issue between property owners. We've had the sheriff's department stand outside of the restaurant. They've confirmed that it is not a, a noise issue. Even if the town had a noise ordinance, it wouldn't violate the town's noise ordinance. Um, so that is really the only issue we've had with this property owner or with this restaurant owner over the last, over the last year. Mm -hmm. Two of these that are here, have outside consumption also? Uh, yes. My crim and one main. Um, for whatever reason, the lease agreements with the town for use of the town property have never been put in place on those two. I'd like to see those in place if we're going to approve it. It's basically requiring them to hold the town harmless mm -hmm. if anything happens. Uh, and to carry insurance to cover us in case somebody trips over the chain that doesn't get picked up or we have some type of issue. Something we could bring to the the restaurant tours. I know we had a traffic issue this year that resulted in a vehicle being hit and broadsided and knocked into one of the pillars where the seating area is in front of one main. Um, it didn't go too far into where the seating area is, but it is a risk where somebody is broadsided they could go into that, that one vehicle area. Um, we have not, I have not looked into the documents that were shared with me in terms of establishing this agreement for insurance. Um, if the board would like, um, an option would be to approve all the licenses pending uh, an agreement for these two particular restaurants to provide insurance for outdoor seating. In this way, I can then be free to work with the property owner or the restaurant owners and say, this is what we need. As soon as you get this put into place, your license is, is approved. Is this something that they can do relatively quickly, do you think? Yeah, there's a draft out there. Yeah. I'll look and see if I can find it again. Yeah. I know I drafted it a yeah. few years ago. And it made it through the attorney's review. Sure. And I think that it's there. It's a pretty simple one page but what it does is put the responsibility on them and not the town. Yeah, yeah, no, I get it. I just would yeah, I would hate to hold them up for you know for months. You know, not, not you know, if it's gonna be something that we can do quickly, then that sounds great. Well, could you make it because none of them are gonna be doing any seating outside right now, so can't you approve these and then once they complete the outside document you need, then you yeah. can then they can serve outside? Sure. That sound like a reasonable Yeah, yeah. As long as, as long as we're, we feel that we can do it in a timely way. Sure. Yeah, well, right. if they can't complete that, then they can't serve outside. Right. Well, I understand. But if there was something on our side where we were like, yeah. well, this is going to take us four months to okay. review and get through, and then they're like, well, then what's, you know, we're most of the way through the season, and this is 
Okay, well, I think we can be reasonable. But if we can that get this done in the next couple of weeks, then we're not affecting anybody's business. And right. Sounds good. I mean, always going to be sitting outside for about a month or so. Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the rate we're going, it could be longer. That way. Might be longer. Never know. Good snow again tomorrow, right? <laughs> okay. So, does that satisfy you? Yep. Can I ask a question? Yep. Can I follow up on the one main? And I want to confess I'm a Red Lion in board member, mm -hmm. second and third floor. Sure. Are you saying there's absolutely nothing the town can do? Or what are you saying? I'm saying that the town does not have a noise ordinance, and so there would be no way for us to enforce an issue related to noise at this point. But even if we did have a noise ordinance, the issue isn't so much that the noise being created inside one main exits the building, it's that it's going upward. And once we have that scenario where it's not affecting neighbors outside of the building, it becomes a private issue between the condo owners of the building. And so then the owner of the first floor, which is being credited for creating the noise, now has to work with the owners of the second floor where the um, residents live, and they have to work together to fix the issue. Um, unless it, if it was coming outside, then it would be our problem. It would be a town issue. We would have to solve it, but because the noise is going upward, um, it's an it's internal to the building. And has Shane agreed to do that? To to work with the owners? Right. Um, yeah, that's not something that we could we could ask them to do, which we have. And the restaurant owner doesn't have to comply because it is a private issue. The only thing we can do is ask that they work together. Yeah, we can't force them to do it because it's a private issue, um, and we could be seen as affect, siding with one private resident over another. And in the situation, we have advised both the owner of the second floor, which is RACDC, and then also the restaurateur on the first floor is to engage one another. And both have confirmed to me that they haven't worked with each other over the last, since a year and a half since I've been around. Have or haven't? Have not. Have not. Have not. Yeah, so that's not a topic that's going to impact what we're doing here. Yeah. This board has no say on the internal no. noise within the building. It's only if it's out on the street. Yeah. We have that confirmation from the sheriff's department who has stood outside on the nights when a noise complaint has come in, and they have said to me that they don't have a problem with the noise coming out of the building. So. Well, hopefully there isn't a problem between now and next year, from my point of view. Sure. Any okay. other questions about the licenses? Make a motion to approve them pending the subsequent two applications that require some insurance proof. The sidewalks. Up to the sidewalk. Outside down. So I'll start that. Those in favor? Aye. 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 No other business? Motion to adjourn? Motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Liquor. Liquor control. Liquor. Motion carries. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not all going home yet. The motion. That's pretty slick. Yeah. 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 Item is public comment. This is public to be heard about anything that's not on the agenda. Can I comment? Sure. I wanted to um, bring the select board up to date on what the library's been up to. Can I pass these around? This is a monetary statement of the value of the services that the library provided for the fiscal year ending June of 18. And if you take a look at it, you will see that aside from the budget that the town approves for several hundred thousand dollars, but less than three hundred, we provide services valued at almost nine hundred thousand dollars. So I just wanted you to be aware of what you're getting for your money and what the town is getting. And beyond that, right now, this past, this current month, um, this is an investment in community relations. This has got, you can't put any money value on this, 
But this month, the library has provided, aside from all the books and everything else that's borrowed, we've had an adult book discussion, a senior center book discussion, we've had story time three times a week, we've had a Ukrainian egg decorating thing, we've had two films, or one more tomorrow, two films including tomorrow, two Poem Town events, it is currently National Library Week, which is being celebrated in the library. During school vacation week, there will be additional kids' programs on poetry. And we've had two story times at daycare centers. So the library's been quite busy in the community. And I just wanted the select board to know that we're not all asking for money. We're giving back an awful lot. So I just wanted you to be up to date. Thank you. If I may add something uh, in support of what Sally's mentioned to the board, uh, Amy and I have had an ongoing positive relationship. We have devised a plan for how to use capital reserve funds set aside for the library in addition to budgeted amounts that the library has available for, for upgrades. The library has been a great partner to the town. They're using the revenue that they have in conjunction with um, uh, limited resources that are available through the town. Um, and yeah, we look forward to having a positive relationship. A lot of good work. I want to address that when you get to the grants. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> One added note, that the, I'm not sure if it's related, but the Ukrainian egg decoration, I believe, may be related to town of Randolph's former participation in the Sister Cities program. I think we were partnered with a city or a town in the Ukraine, and I don't remember the name, but it was back in the 90s. So I put I put more of those um, tables on the on the table if anybody wants them. So could I make a suggestion? Sure. So I think that this is all good stuff, and I think it should be shared with the rest of the community, so that the rest of the community sees what's going on here. So maybe a little something in the paper, an article. That's a good would idea. Would be helpful because I think you need to kind of you know I said this to Amy when I was there last year, you know the market it, and I got criticized for this, but I think. Larry was there when I said it, you know, the library needs to do a little bit of marketing to promote itself so that the community understands what the value of the library is. We did have it at um, town meeting. Okay, great. Yes, I do remember seeing it there. Mm -hmm. So, but if there was a way to circulate that, you know, Front Porch Forum, maybe the newspaper, sure. I think that would be helpful. Thank you. Anybody else under public to be heard? Yes. Yes. A few minutes, please. We got multiple saying yes, or you guys are all together. We're all together. Yeah, we're all together. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. I'm Betsy Race. Um, thank you for taking time to listen to us. I'm a retired teacher, uh, and we're here to present more information about the East Valley Community Group as requested. Um, as you can see, most of our membership is here tonight, and I'm going to ask each of them, each of them to introduce themselves. And you got like two minutes, because this is supposed to be for us to get a briefing and decide if we want to put it on the agenda later. Okay, sure. Just tell you. All right. Well, we keep the agenda today. We have we have a lot of members with great skills and lots of amazing experience, and come from many walks of life. And um, we even have a web designer. We've got a new website. And you're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. sure. I'm Josie Carruthers, and um, I want our, our mission statement, right? Our mission statement is uh, we seek to promote neighbors meeting neighbors um, and to celebrate life in our villages that go from East Brookfield to East Bethel but encounter three of the Randolphs, as you know, perfect, very well. Our goals include building community vibrancy, building community. Let's get to know each other. Let's have a good time. Um, uh, and completing the renovation, of course, of the East Valley Community Hall, um, which is historic. Um, so that's a key strategy in our building community effort. Um, so it's not the only reason we exist, but it's, it's a, a big deal, of course, for us. And we are here today um, because building the vibrant community that we feel a part of means participating. So we show up, we show up for each other, we show up tonight. Um, we want you to know us, and we want to get to know you. We, we're here, really, to uh, promote a good, knowledgeable, transparent, building, uh, working relationship with all of you. Um, united we stand. Um, and so, um, 
um, people who participate in our group and people who are on our mailing list. It's, all, it's about 50 people now, uh, and the number are growing all the time. Um, we get inquiries and, and so on. So um, we understand the, like, if we're looking at the community hall renovation, we understand the town's limited ability to dig into a project of that magnitude. Um, and uh, that's why we're doing it, you know. Uh, we need it, we want it, and so we'll work for it. Um, and so um, we, you know, that's really it. We want to work closely with, with the town while meeting our mi mission. <coughs> One of the things that we tasked you with last time was to come out with what the actual formal structure of your group is. That's so next versus that. a, like, well, we don't have that much time because we're through the two minutes at this point, but what type of structure is your organization and what's your roles and responsibilities and how you're going to interact with the town? So that is in the document how that, that, all, that we've handed out. Yeah, but it doesn't say, are you going to be a private nonprofit? Are you looking to be a committee that is a subset of the town? We're not what? looking to be a committee, uh, a subset of the town. Uh, we're, we're, we're a private group at this point. We're nonprofit is probably in our future. Uh, in the immediate future, we've, we've come to an agreement to work with our CDC if, uh, if uh, we do take on funding from an individual, so um, it can run through our CDC and uh, get the 501c3 status. But at, the, at this moment, we are not uh, a 501c3, but it is perhaps on our, our uh, timeline. So awesome. roles and responsibilities here you just list. The people doing contacts and the committee they're on. We're looking for like, what do you want to do? Do you want to design the new stuff? Do you want to research the historical requirements of the structure and how to do it? Are you going out to actually apply for grants? Yes. And the funding. Yes. And are you going to put out bids for contractors and whatnot, which you can't for the town to do that? But is it, you know, that's what we need to do. Is actually is define. it possible to get somebody from either the select board or the town manager to provide us exactly what you need in writing, rather than verbally? When's your next meeting? Uh, our next meeting is first Tuesday in May. Yeah. First Tuesday in May. And one of the things we wanted to do was to invite any and all of you to come to any and all of our meetings. We've got to warn them if we're going to have more than two there. Uh -huh. so we'll do that. <clears throat> our meetings are posted and on so two. May 14th. No, first Tuesday of May. I think it's first is Tuesday is the yeah. And where do you meet? 530. At, we meet at Jones House right now. Right now. House at, uh, mm -hmm. East yeah. 40, right. 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 Second, right. Second right. branch. Right. The meetings are posted in two places in town and on the website. And sometimes it gets on front porch form. Okay, what we'll do is we'll um, discuss it later during appointments and see about getting a select board member to come over and sit down with you and help you define what those or pieces are. Great. One, one final point would be um, where uh, we need to access as much money as we can through grants, um, of course. Well, we had a, a, a meeting on March 6 with uh, U.S. Department of Agriculture, World Development, the Vermont Arts, Arts Council, and, the, and uh, four other organizations. And uh, we need to, what we're looking for is to fulfill your requirements as fast as possible and have you give us your, you know, uh, your, we're hoping that you'll commit to, yeah, to uh, and endorse our efforts so that you will sign off on the grants, uh, you know, as, you know, the town owns the building. We're the people who will go out for the grants. We're the people who will go out and do fundraising. We're the people who are taking this project on. Um, and um, so, of course, we can't do it without you, and I think you can't do it without us. So we're looking for action as fast as possible so we can start writing grants. Um, agency. Yeah. That's it. One more thing, Trini. I'm wondering if this meeting that you talked about with someone from the board, from Adolfo, maybe should happen before our main meeting. You want to meet up, Betsy? I'll come over. We'll sit down and figure this out. Uh, sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Can I come over? Yes. Because it won't be in the same building. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm just saying, if it's. Yeah. Um, more efficient that way 
I think that's a good idea. We just, we we just let us know. We'll have the conversation when we get down to old business under appointments, and then I'll reach out to you. Okay. Thank you. Maybe stronger than mine, though. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> oh, I never mind. Anything else under public to be heard? Anybody else? Yep. I'm Bill Chidley. I'm uh, been recommended to join your energy committee, and I just came by this evening in case you had any questions for me. We will get to you under appointments then. I I may not be able to stay that long. I wasn't sure I was on the agenda or not. So you are. Mm -hmm. Should so I we that? No, no. Uh, if, if, if you can, sure. Otherwise, we have the energy committee's approval of your candidacy. So, because yeah. I have another organization I'll How much time are you here till? Till six thirty. Okay. Uh, we will have to give you another. Yeah. Right, Steve. <laughs> Okay, that one. Next on the agenda is approval of the agenda. Uh, if the board would entertain a few possible options for change under the other business, uh, the items being requested to change or inclusion is one is an assembly permit for a town event and then also, uh, also coincides with a private entity event, which is a 5K run. Uh, the second item is what's referred to as the local emergency management plan an item that was inadvertently left off of the agenda. It's our annual plan that would be required by the state of Vermont and then also our regional planning commission. Uh, and then the other two items are just uh, the board certification of uh, items that we already follow. Uh, the town is looking to apply for a grant that the select board has previously authorized us to apply for. And these are just two documents that confirm that the select board or that the town uh, does what it needs to do to comply with road standards and then also receive more than $300 per mile for our roads within the town, which we do. Okay. okay. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda in this, with the additions that Alpha just suggested. Second. All those in favor? Uh, okay. Okay. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, sorry, the second was that. Okay, oh, sorry. So next we have our consent calendar, which are the minutes and warrants. Any questions, comments? I, I had a question on one of the warrants. Okay. So do I bring it up now? Or? Mm -hmm. Okay. I just wanted a further explanation on the eleven thousand something to the state for retirement. And I know the background of it, but I'm yeah. wondering why that's coming up now. The issue, so we no longer are taking the credit. We have the credit expired, I believe it was last, uh, earlier this year it expired, one of our previous payments. And what happened was the state inadvertently maintained the credit on their side, so when they sent us the initial bill, we paid the bill that we were sent, and they subsequently said, we apologize, we sent you the wrong amount. You underpaid because you took the credit that we had issued that you're no longer eligible for, at which point we then had to pay the remaining balance that was supposed to have come to us in that payment. So we, we took the credit that they offered us, right? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> they offered us a credit, we took it, then they said, sorry, Can't take it. we were kidding. And that's yeah. all done now. So. And that's all done now, yeah. Okay. Gotta send them money back. We'll take them to court. <laughs> well, that was a lot of money. What, three, four hundred thousand? It was, yeah. 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 Sad to see it go, but. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other questions on the words? Motions? Motion to approve the consent calendar consisting of the meeting minutes and the words. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Jumping down to old business, um, which is the appointments to um, we have uh, the fire warden position. Daniel Boone is being recommended by the fire advisory committee. Any concerns on that one? 
a thankless job. Mm -hmm. uh, in the past, we've allowed the fire warden to select their backup. interest in going on the capital planning and budget committee or if that works As for the Matt. rep yeah if that works for Matt. you want to bail on that one Matt that's fine okay. uh, that was which committee I'm sorry capital planning. capital planning the committee we have a letter from Bill here <coughs> anybody have any questions for me so are you actually living in Newport? No, I'm living in um, Berlin. I rent half a house in Berlin. So and you're I, from Berlin, Vermont? Yeah. My, uh, my goal is to move to this town during the spring and early summer. So I thought I would move and volunteer for the committee, but there was um, a motion made at the last meeting that I attended to uh, recommend me. And I stated it was pretty quick, but I would be willing to serve. Bill's been coming to a lot of the energy committees recently. What's your connection to the Randolph community? I like the community as my uh, long-term uh, residence because of the college and the high school where I feel I can contribute as uh, a volunteer to help young people learn some of the trade skills that I've developed over my lifetime. And I believe that the market for my services here can let me continue to work and be productive part-time. Uh, I'm a small businessman and I love farming. Now, this community seems perfect for me. Losing farmers. Hmm. I'm the vegetable type. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. well, we're the maple syrup type. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Today, so that's why we're pushing. We need everything. The fire was starting when we left town. Mm -hmm. Out of town. Sorry, can you go back to the first page? Um, Dan Boone also expressed interest in the health officer position. So I did talk to him at our last meeting, and I asked him to reach out to Lori to get more information. Is he a good candidate? There might be a couple. I'm, I'm looking for two that were interested. So I did a little poking around just like you did, because that's our job. So we may have a few. But we needed two people. Okay. We need an alternate, right? Oh, or a deputy, right? A deputy, we could have a deputy. Yeah, so, so <coughs> that could be a good thing. Okay. Are we going to look at the two rivers? We only need two, right? We do. Uh, we've had uh, some trouble communicating with one of our former representatives. Uh, we serve as an alternate. He's not confirmed whether or not he wants to continue, and this is Winston Sadu. Uh, we have two individuals that are currently, one that was recently appointed, which is Gary Durr, and the other is one of our former, or most recent reps, um, Ramsey Papp. She's willing to serve as the alternate if Gary's interested in serving as the primary. Uh, so she left that up for the board to okay. decide. I would recommend that Ramsey be the regular, because I noticed her letter, she would do either one, and I think she was the regular one last year. Right? She was. That she be the regular person and Gary be the alternate. Apparently if there are two there, they have to come up with one vote. So. We were very specific in the questions we asked Gary intentionally because of the challenges we have with Two Rivers right now. So we should ask her the same thing. Yeah. And if she's been there a lot for the last couple of years, you know, what has she seen and what actions has she taken? Because we haven't seen a change in behavior there. 
Actually, gotten worse. <clears throat> so I'm going to hold off on that till that to the chat between Chuck and Ramsey. I would say yes. Okay. All right. So we're going to motion to for the bill here. You want to do it that way, and then you want to do this. Okay, I'll connect to the community. Put mm -hmm. him over Lux. Who's the other one? John Lux. Mm. They have six, so there's... Oh, we can put both of them on. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Which I think we can put both of them on here. Which so committee? we have John Lux. Which committee? Energy, Energy. Energy Committee. We have two positions. Has he applied for it? He was interested, right? He hasn't actually submitted, but he says he's interested. He's verbally committed to it. Right. I talked to him a couple of days ago. Actually. But we also have Jerry Ward interested in the energy. I, th I talked to John Watts a couple of days ago, and he said he would just as soon be a volunteer. He would rather have younger people on, is what he told me when I asked him. Last week, I think he's. I think he's going to be involved to some extent, no matter what. But. I believe uh, Jerry Ward's interest is more on a subcommittee for the Planning Commission on Energy, as opposed to the actual Energy Committee. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you have a. Let's see. Email. I have had communications with Jerry, and I believe that has stood out. And one of the tasks that I asked him to perform was to speak with with Marty because of the planning commission portion of it. So I believe that's his interest. Yeah, I think I saw that same thing. Is Jerry? he on? The, he's not on the planning commission, though, right? Who? Jerry on the planning. No, Jerry's yeah, on the planning one. commission, but I got an email. It's um, from you got some from Shannon too. I think something from that. Shannon. Yeah, and that's what I was looking for here. It's uh, it's on the uh, email list on the first page, the very it's bottom. Attached to this. It's attached to that yeah. right, because I had an email that's talking about putting one. So that was. A, but he says his willingness is to serve on the subcommittee, being appointed to assist the planning commission. We're not forming a subcommittee to assist the planning commission. That's got to be out of the. Desire to move the town plan without an enhanced energy chapter. Which is what the planning commission voted to do in the last meeting. So he's looking that, to join the group that's going to work on the planning commission to develop the enhanced energy right. piece, but we're not appointing that to the meeting. So there is going to be a subcommittee right there. Well, that was what the, that was my, my suggestion to the planning commission was that in order to move the town plan forward, okay, that we because the planning commission had worked on this now for well over nine months, it seems like we were moving it forward, and when we got to that forum, it didn't seem like we were going anywhere it's because what we were hearing is what we didn't, but apparently we didn't didn't get it right. So my intention here was to get us to a point. And Tori told us in that meeting that the current energy chapter was acceptable to Two Rivers and that wasn't a problem. So my feeling was that if the members of the public felt strongly enough to want to help draft that, again, because the problem is, you know, they show up the 11th hour and then they railroad the process. And so I felt that if the town plan, we could move the town plan forward, fixing the things that we needed to fix, so we wouldn't be dragging this on for another year. We, it would be beneficial for us to do that. And then if the Planning Commission wanted to set up a subcommittee of folks who were interested in participating in that process, then they could do that, come back to the Planning Commission, make a recommendation to the Planning Commission on how we get an enhanced energy plan. So that was my goal. And I made the motion and the Planning Commission accepted and we moved that forward so that we were going to only include the chapter on energy that is currently in there that was accepted. So the enhanced energy piece needs to be hammered out and addressed, and, and I felt that, you know, the Planning Commission thought we had done a good job, and then we heard differently. So that's 
That's why I did what I did. Because we cannot continue to move along without a town plan here. That's approved by Two Rivers if we're going to expect to be able to attract grants. And that's what I understand from the meeting. And you asked the Energy Committee to go yes, the, energy, the Energy Commission, Planning Commission and the Energy Committee needed to talk. Apparently there's something going on. I've got an email to the effect and they think they have a, people who would love to, to serve as part of that process to be able to come back and make a recommendation to the Planning Commission as to how we should do the enhanced energy piece. So. Right, that's what I heard that night. So. so, I mean, Jerry could be a part of that, but I don't necessarily think we have to appoint a sub, we have to let them appoint a subcommittee, right? Right, we don't appoint that subcommittee. They can do that themselves. So that's what needs to happen. So Jerry can then be part of that if you'd like to be part of that, if they so desire. Sure. So going back to the representative of the Energy Committee. I think we appoint them both. I think so. Mm -hmm. roll. Um, we have the ability to unappoint them. Um, so. Okay, well. <laughs> There's not anybody else clamoring to do it. No, I think it's a good idea. I, I'd love to see more people involved in the Energy Committee to work through this enhanced energy plan. So. And who are we appointing? John Lutz. Bill and John Lutz. Bill. Because nobody younger stepped up to the plate yet. <laughs> <laughs> they probably ran right over it. <laughs> Any concerns with putting those two on? Okay. Planning Commission, we had, um, we had uh, Sonny and Mike. Has expressed interest. Bill McGrath was interested in the DRB or the Planning Commission. Mm -hmm. uh, Sonny and Mike were both interested in Planning Commission. We have the ability to take Sonny and Mike on Planning Commission and put Bill on DRB. Uh, I think that would be a good idea. Is he's the only one that's expressed interest in the DRB that I'm aware of. Sounds good. Okay. <clears throat> Did we get a, a Rasta or a Hub person? Is it Valerie? Well, um... No, the board had expressed an interest in reserving that for the hub or the roster group. We've asked the roster group to provide us with a candidate. I think they're very busy in working on the hub itself. We had some loose interest from Paul Ray, one of our community members who has remained very active. Um, he was not fully committed, mostly because he has a lot of work that he's performing already with the roster group and the property, so I'm not sure how much time he would be able to devote to this, but he expressed some loose interest. Um, we did receive uh, an email message from Valerie Schoolcraft, who's remained very involved with planning events and committees, so, um, which is why we include her on the list. Well, given my experience with Valerie and her ability to do things, I would certainly... But isn't she part of the hub? Um, I think she's involved in that some. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to ask them if they think, I mean, if that was okay, then, you know, if they thought that sh that would be, a, I guess that would be the question for them. You know, if we're, that was why we were holding that, and if she's involved in that, mm -hmm. I think it'd be a great way to fill that space. So she's done a, done a really awesome job working with Heidi on things like the Christmas light parade. She helped me a lot with Mars Hill. So I know she's working with Heidi right now on this, you know, the community Easter egg thing. Uh, very strong community supporter. So very diligent person. No, oh, she's on top of everything. Yep. So no concern as long as the hub and if the hub is fine. Her yeah, fine. if they're fine sure. utilizing her for that, I think she would be an excellent choice. Yeah. Great. For DRV, we have two members up for renewal. Three members up for renewal. And Adam and would like to go to alternate, and John would like to go to regular.
And we have that, and we have a vacancy that we, we can fill with building the ground. We do. Mm -hmm. okay. Now we'd have to be looking for a few more. Looks like we're looking for a couple of alternates. Yeah, we'll be mm -hmm. for some alternates. We have some um, feedback that's come back on a couple of these members so that we ought to probably sit them down with and have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Turn that first. Wouldn't be opposed to giving them a one year term. We sorted that out. Versus a three year. Well, let's just have a conversation and see what happens. Not quite yet. Just, okay. just, um, that's what I think would be appropriate to have a. Have a chat first. It's nice that two people want to switch. Yeah, so Adam wants to switch right to be an alternate, and John wants to switch to be permanent. So then you'd have Bill filling the vacancy, and you'd have to find two more to be alternates. You'd have two alternates, two alternate spaces to be vacant. There is some concern from the town engineer and that there's, there's no scenario in our appointment policy that discusses a non-renewal of appointment. It doesn't say that the term ends at the end of the year. It doesn't say if it will continue until the appointment continues, but it also doesn't say that the position terminates and there is no one filling that position if there's no vacancy. Um, so there is that give and take between my point of view which gives the select board more, more time to consider their options and what the town engineer is considering, which is she feels that if an appointment isn't made, the position isn't, isn't occupied. So I haven't spoken with the attorney yet because I don't think we need to have that conversation and spend resources on that conversation, but there's a concern about that. Economic Development Council, we had one vacancy there. We came forward. We have White River Valley Ambulance. It's you. <laughs> I was asked to be here to be if you wanted to speak to me, so maybe I could hear what you want to say. So some of the concern, as I'm sure people have seen in the paper and whatnot, is that the cost of the ambulance service is continuing to rise. We're trying to figure out ways to control that cost uh, and look at the service. And we've thrown some ideas back and forth with mm -hmm. the management at Corva. What we're looking for, and I think you heard it some also on the two rivers and some of the challenges we have with them, is to make sure that the folks that are representing the town that are appointed by the select board are representing what what we need to do and what our views are on those committees versus just, you know, we have some people that don't like that conflict or don't like to be in the position of raising their hand and saying, hey, wait a minute, can we look at how we're doing this or can we look at other ways? Well, um, the last two years, actually, the, the um, per capita has been stable. It was stable for five years before that. Um, and I expect it will go down next year because we are expanding the work that we do. We're doing, we're taking more transfers, um, and that's generating more revenue. I've spoken to the board twice about the possibility that in June, we might be able to um, reduce the June payment because I know Randolph didn't appropriate enough money um, to complete this year, um, your fiscal year, which is half of our, overlaps with half of our year. So um, I'm a board member of a nonprofit corporation. I'm not a member of Two Rivers. And a nonprofit board member is supposed to 
promote the best interest of the corporation of which he is a board member. So um, I can communicate your concerns. I have done that. But I cannot tear up Werva from the inside. If, you, if the town of Randolph wants to withdraw from Werva, which I think would be a disaster for the hospital and for Randolph as a whole, you have the power to do that. I don't recommend it. Um, and I don't see how you're going to be able to do it a lot less expensively than we do. Um, and, and have the same kind of coverage. Oh. And Jeff, I'm going to ask a question for just for the minute's sake. So, um, was the comment that you made was that you represent that you're appointed to the board and your job is to represent the agency as opposed to the town, or was your comment that you are to represent the town to the board? We're supposed to act in a manner that re that the director reasonably believes to be in the best interests of. The corporation. In this case, it's White River Valley Ambulance. Sorry, that, that document is from where? Vermont statutes. I have copies if you'd like one. So usually you balance the two. I'm sorry? Usually you balance the two. You try to figure out what the town is trying to achieve and the questions and the concerns that we have, and you balance them with the ongoings of the ambulance in this case so that it's. You're looking out for what your role is on that board for the nonprofit, but at the same time, you've been appointed by the town mm -hmm. to represent the town on the Werva board. Right, but my so goal there is to make the is to make Werva function as best it can, mm -hmm. and I have been doing that for seven years. Uh, I have I don't think I've missed any meetings. I'm the, I've been the treasurer for seven years now. Mm -hmm. And I work on the on that function every day. Um, I follow the cash. I'm now monitoring every payroll, um, and that has cut the payroll back. Uh, we have the best manager we've had in all the seven years that I've been there. We have Matt Parrish, who grew up in Granville, uh, has. Um, has Vermont roots and Vermont ethics, and um, we just we have a retreat coming up on Saturday. <clears throat> and some of the comments that have been made through um, some sort of um, questionnaire program, uh, some of the answers were that we have that he's the best, the the ones who've made the comments the best that we've had. So um, I don't know what. It's been offered to the word of a board that Randolph get a special rate. I just, I don't think that it works particularly well for the other towns in this area. I don't think it works well for Randolph to have Randolph think they're entitled to a special consideration. What you've seen happen is we've looked at some of these larger ticket items that the town has, and word was one of them, mm -hmm. and said, what is the service the town needs? versus like saying this is the service and you're going to keep paying for it. But what do we need for service and how best do we meet that need? Have you answered and, that question? Well, no, that's where we're coming into. That's why we're trying to figure out if, when we're going through that process, if you're going to be comfortable sitting at the table knowing that we're going to be exploring what the definition of need is. We'll set up a group similar to what we did when we looked at the police <coughs> district where we have you know, people that are for it, people that are against it, and you know, people from all different parts of town, and try to get a balanced group around the table and define what we need and, and how that needs being met and you know, where the what looks best for the town going forward. And what we're just we're trying to make sure is if you're sitting there at that table, that, that we're not putting you in a position that you aren't comfortable being in versus, I mean, I have no doubt you can handle it with your years in the legislature and all that, I'm sure you've been in much worse, but what we don't want to do is put you there and have you be in an uncomfortable position as we start poking and prodding at, at what this looks like and, and well, you, do a been comparison. Doing, you've been doing that for the last six or seven months <laughs> because we've been getting emails from, uh, from Adolfo. That 
pushing and prodding has been very helpful in getting Urva to be more challenged, to look for other revenue sources, to cut back payroll costs. Um, our payroll costs are probably two or three thousand dollars less every two weeks than they were nine months ago. And that's a result of new management. Well, that's good. Um, so, so, so uh, do but you I think, think that the meeting, so when Adolfo and I attended that Werba meeting, do you think that was a positive step, or do you think they felt we were challenging them too much? I mean, we we're throwing out ideas, and, and, and so one of them was, you know, what other revenue streams do they have? And it sounds like you've already explored that, and so now, we, you know, doing transfers, I think, is actually providing some extra income, correct? Mm -hmm. So, we're just out of curiosity, one of the things that I we touched on was who bills for services that go onto the interstate. Is that getting billed, not getting billed? Not yet. It's not yet, but you're working on it. But we're working on it. So, so I'm happy to hear that you're working on it because I, was, I think that we've been giving them a free ride up there. I was working on the, um, I started working on the, the diesel tax uh, three weeks ago. I went to Montpelier and spoke with the chair of the Transportation Committee and the vice chair of the House of Transportation Committee the chair of the Senate Transportation Committee. I now understand that everybody's going to be paying the, the tax, towns, cities. Mm -hmm. So probably trying to get more of an exempt from that is isn't going to be successful. Isn't going to happen right. because the legislature is raising a lot of taxes, and that's one of them. And that's one of them. So. Okay. But I, 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 when I was there, I was giving, I was given forms for applying for refunds. You can go back three years if you, if you can just um, get them to say yes, you were exempt or should have been. And so we will apply okay. for that. Um, but I haven't, you know, I do this as a volunteer. I know. I usually, I know. Work, I usually work twenty hours a week for Werva. It's right. fun to some extent. Um, when I'm not That's why we're all kind of here, because I can tell you the stipend isn't coming close to what we're doing. <laughs> so, uh, Randolph's not going to be able to pull out of Werva for at least 12 months, so you need a board representative who can help make Werva function and not be somebody who's going to be a spoiler on the board. You need to do your due diligence, I would say, outside of the board. I provide the town manager every month with comprehensive files, same as I give the board. I'd be happy to give them to any of you if you give me your email address. My email is just swebster at sovereign.net. So you can email me, give me your email address, and I'll copy you on those, those emails to the board. So. I'm good with you. I think the best person we have there is the treasurer. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm glad to hear that some of the suggestions that we offered were are being considered because I think you know there's some things that I just think that we would we've been you know we've been providing Werb has been providing and the fire departments have been providing services to that interstate up there and you know we don't own that interstate mm -hmm. we shouldn't be responsible for having to take care of everything that happens on the interstate without any compensation. Mm -hmm. And I know other communities get compensated in other areas, so however that happens, we need to find out how we get that done. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there are insurance companies involved here. <laughs> so. yeah. There are board members who think that at some point, where it was going to have to expand. Mm -hmm. um, it's becoming harder and harder to find staff. We've been fairly lucky that way ourselves. And maybe it's not luck, maybe it's because of some things that Word was doing. But. Um, all EMS organizations are We're stressed right now. Everybody's struggling. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. And as you know, the launders grow older and older, and young people mm -hmm. don't step up as the way people did 50 years ago. Well, the young ago. people aren't here. That's the problem. Well, I just yeah, but there are some. We're some, but we're you know yeah. this is a this is an ongoing problem, not just from a mm -hmm. standpoint or a fire standpoint. You know, it's a business problem. I mean, we're, we're all losing that segment of the population that does that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, okay. So, and I do see myself as a little different from the President of the United States and NATO. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I'm happy. Okay. Sure. Thank you, you have Steve. an alternate C2. Does the alternate go to the meetings also? or? We haven't had an alternate work? for quite a while, I think. I was the alternate when you came on this board. I remained an alternate temporarily and then was appointed, and nobody else was. So We've never filled that. But if you make all the meetings, we don't need to, right? <laughs> I do make all the meetings, and I would anyway, if, even if I had that backup, because uh, it's important to stay on top. So I've actually got some more work okay. to do on that tonight. So great. Thank you very much for coming, Steve. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> We have present time. Um, Mountain Alliance, that was the select board liaison. There's a question here of whether we need one. We don't need one. Okay. How much there? You were no better than I. I think we do need it. We discuss a lot of trash at that meeting. Yeah, anyone's interested. Like trash talk. Fresh <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> football season. <laughs> okay. That's right. Any others? There's only one, which is um, <clears throat> for somebody to sit with Betsy over something more than water. <laughs> more than willing to do that. You get that one? I'll take that one. Okay. You have my email. I have it on your handout. Mm -hmm. And so just you know, email me the time that you're available. Yeah. <laughs> Preferably before nine o'clock at night. <laughs> and it'll be about the same. I will get in touch with you. Okay. I'll get that sorted out. New business. Vermont Community Development Program Municipal Policies and Codes. This item is a house cleaning step that is required by the Vermont Community Development Program for one of our partners, uh, the Claire Martin Center. Mm -hmm. It is just acknowledging that we have policies in place and that we practice uh, legal, um, that, we, that we have legal steps and procedures in place to use some of the state funding. Uh, the document is included in your packet. It's a form that has been approved in the past, just confirming that we have certain policies in place. The board were to approve, what we would do is sign the uh, form, submit it online, and it would make us eligible for that funding to manage the funding. We already have one, right? Is that different than this? We have to do it for every every project, every, project, every, every grant, grant every unfortunately. Project. Yeah. Okay. So it doubles up on the, the work and the paperwork. More than double. And then the state says we want to be green and environmentally friendly. That works. Okay. So if the board is okay with it, if we could just um, have a motion to approve the um, municipal policies and codes sheet. What is the, what are the changes that made to this? says it's revised. I don't know what the changes are with regard to some of the other forms, but as I was going through the document, everything that is being asked for in this document, we we have in place. I'll move that we approve it. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Precision allocation request. We received a request from New England Precision to increase their wastewater allocation. Uh, this particular request made its way through the Wastewater and Wastewater Committee. Um, what they want to do is they want to discharge more of their uh, processed liquid. Uh, right now, what they, what they have in place is a um, dehydration system. Essentially, the water just evaporates and they then dispose of the remaining metals. Um, what we've been working on with New England Precision is a way to be able to safely capture that, um, that material through the sewage system. Um, we've worked with them to determine that whatever it is that they do discharge does not harm our 
bacteria that we use to break, break apart some of the materials. Um, staff feel that the levels that are being proposed for disposal are uh, appropriate. Uh, I was not at the committee meeting where the decision was made. Larry, I wasn't sure if you were at the meeting. Mm -hmm. I, accurate? Um, yeah, we've gone back and forth with them for quite a long time, getting mm -hmm. information, um, revising the agreement, having them go, go back and do some more research, and um, they've been extremely helpful, and um, there's been a lot of great questions asked from them by members of the committee, and this agreement seems to be a good one. Okay. Is there anything extra that will have to be done by the town to process? I don't think so. Yeah. It was really all about making sure that we have the, the existing capacity um, to, to handle their request. Um, and, and then writing uh, an agreement that, um, that works for the town, works for them, and follows appropriate um, environmental regulations. Or did somebody talk with the state about the... Yeah, we had the, we had the I, know, I forget his name, but we had the person from the state who basically oversees the, this sort of thing come to uh, one of the meetings, and uh, he was very helpful. Thanks. There are, I believe, two different charging methods. One is for the simple fluid that's going to be making its way through the actual wastewater system, and then there is a potential additional charge should there be more material in the discharged fluid that has been proposed for the accepting by the wastewater plant, we would then be able to charge for the excess material. Um, they're not allowed to exceed a certain level of contaminants that would harm the wastewater plant, uh, so they are aware of that cap, but anything below that we would charge them one for the amount that they're disposing of liquid-wise and then also for anything above a certain level of uh, Bio, I forget the actual term. Mm -hmm. um, so th there, there, there's additional revenue coming into the wastewater system. That's in a contract we sign with them? That, that would be with, uh, I think, the ongoing agreement. Uh, the proposal I think they submitted includes those levels, and I don't know the exact level of amounts, but there are levels in the agreement that they propose. Yeah, they propose levels, and then the town has already has policy about what the rates are. Yeah. So it would just be filled at whatever rate is. Right. The On policy. the back, it shows where they took some sample data mm -hmm. and ran it through yeah. and, um, using the calculations that are on the last page of the yeah. agreement. And the monitoring is all part of the agreement as well. Sounds like it's going to be uh, followed it's a, closely. Yeah, it's 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 a real win-win. Yeah, it really helps them out. They don't have to put a half a million dollars into a new evaporator, um, and it generates significant yeah, revenue for us. Yeah, revenue for the state. Okay. More questions on the agreement? Comments, concerns, motions. Move that we approve it. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Staying. Water disconnection request, 102 Thayer Brook. We had a property owner that no longer has a home or a structure on the lot that is requested to be removed from, from the water system. Uh, the property owner was advised that if uh, they continue with this action and we do remove them from the, the water system, that if they are to rebuild later on, they would have to apply for a new water allocation. They acknowledge receiving the information and still would like to disconnect from the system. How come we don't pay somebody when they release their allocation? We just make them buy it again. Seems a little one-sided, doesn't it? I'm yeah. giving up my allocation so somebody else can buy it. The cap and, and trade. I, I, back, yeah. I gotta I'm gonna say we pay market for this. <laughs> Secondary market. <laughs> Secondary market for wastewater allocation. <laughs> Transfer like lucrative. real estate. Yeah, be real lucrative, right? Uh, it's like the brown market. <laughs> the brown market, yeah. Guess yeah, okay. we're not quite big enough for that, I guess. <laughs> this is the house that's sort of in the road, right? Or used to be. I'm not familiar with it, but um, mobile home. Yeah, someone told me it was way out there. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, I'll make a motion to uh, 
Remove that then be removed from the system. I'll second that. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Next up is grants. Kimball Library Cultural Facilities Grant. The library has submitted a request to the town and to the select board for approval to apply for uh, a grant. And we have Sally here who wants to speak yeah. about that. So this is the, the third thing that we need to do to come into ADA compliance. We've done the lift. We did the ramp. The bathroom downstairs, I don't know if any of you have seen it, but it's, it's not compliant. The doorway doesn't work. There's a storage area that is not good for air quality or mold and that sort of thing. So Amy hired a, we have hired an architect. And I think that the drawings were provided to you, mm -hmm. is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Um, this is the plan that the trustees have selected to go ahead with. And it gives a separate sink, which is, they don't have to change the doorway because that door is removed going from the downstairs into the pool area. There's just a new door now that goes into where the toilet is. So we have two sinks, which is great in a children's area anyway. Um, baby changing and all of that. Um, the architect has estimated, this is not a quote, it has estimated a number, it's coming close to $40,000 to do this, divide up to $20,000. So if we can take 20, get the $20,000 grant, take $10,000 out of the capital budget allocation for the library, and the trustees will provide the additional ten thousand dollars. So it's a it's a matching grant. We're proposing that we use half that half of the matching grant come from the uh, the capital allocation and half come from the trustees fund. Now the thing is that this ha this grant has to be applied for. The deadline is I believe it's. The end of this month is the first of May. So it's May first. Here. May first. Okay. So we only have a few days, and the the grant requires um, um, quotes, not an estimate. So Amy has a couple of people who are prepared to give quotes, and she'll have two contractors, and she will get that the week of the twenty second. So the applications do the first, and so we can we can get our end of it done in time. But we need the town to go ahead and say yes, yes, yes. We need two or three. How does that work? Um, you have three for town things. No, you, have to, you have to put out a request for proposal from three people or not? This isn't oh. for the town. This is the, the grant. This is just for the grant yeah. program. Okay, so, so they're okay. You don't need a third quote. Yeah. Thank you, Chuck. Yeah. And just want to make sure we. You have to bid it yeah. you according bid it. to the town's procurement policy. Yeah. So if the town requires three, then they have to get three. That's after we get the grant. Okay, so you do that. I'm just checking to make sure we can be all within the legal. So we don't want somebody coming back saying you're supposed to get three and you only got two. No. Okay. Just it's two for the grant. This is okay. for the grant. Okay. So what we have in our capital plan is the dome leak repair for twenty five thousand. Is yeah. that where this is coming from? That would, that's where the money would come from. Which drops that down to 15. It drops it down to 15, uh, but conversations that uh, Amy and I have had have circled around the amount of funding that the library has invested of its own money, especially with the windfall that it recently received. Mm -hmm. A lot of the work that has been ongoing at the library has been privately funded by their revenues. And so we, through our conversations, uh, Amy felt very comfortable with taking from that $25,000, understanding that that project is still outstanding, but because of this grant opportunity, it would make would make better use of the money we have available to use right away. To apply right now, get this, exactly. and figure out how to fund the donor later? Yeah. Okay, well, that makes sense to me. Yeah. Are you pretty sure that the 40000 will do it? I don't know. Mm -hmm. This is the architect's estimate. These drawings that you have are, are just that. They're not plans, they're drawings. Mm -hmm. um, his, his guess was, I think, 37 something. And when I talked with Amy yesterday, she was saying, it sounds like it's gonna be closer to 40. But I, you know. Nobody knows. Nobody you knows. Go but we're proposing that the town release 10,000, up to 10. 
I mean, if it comes in at less than that, and we we have to match the toy, we have to match what the grant is. Anyway, it could be it could be less. It's, it never is, but it could be. But if it goes over, I think the trustees we haven't formally voted on this, but we have had a consensus of opinion. It's how, the trustees, I think, are willing to step up to the plate. Yeah. yeah. No, I was thinking the other way. If it comes in over, uh, should we be applying for more in the beginning? It says thirty thousand tonight. No, it's where do you see thirty? First paragraph. That's the maximum award. That's the most they'll give in the grant. Oh. Right, but she Sally said twenty, right? But but we are applying for twenty, and that's not my decision. Amy has done that, and I don't have the rationale on that. I'm sorry. I've just been involved in some bidding lately where the actual bids have come in about twice as much as the architect's quote. So it's, it's hoping you $80,000 to do that bathroom I'll sign up. Okay. I've been in office you can bid. nine. You can bid. Yeah. Do you know anybody that does that kind of work? Well, gee. <laughs> yeah. huh. Huh. In part of my scheduled time outside of this board. Okay. So... <laughs> I just wanted to think about it. They should apply for a little more because they may get less than they apply. Is for. there an option for you to say, go ahead, apply for twenty, but you can't apply for? You could say, okay, you could apply for more. So can I ask you for that? That you have to apply for more. Pardon me. We can authorize you to apply for the maximum of thirty. Okay, and then we could apply for what we want. For thirty. Sure. Uh, we could have, we could have okay. applied to 30. I, but I'd be curious to know what Amy's rationale was for only applying for 20. Does she have some well, I was history or magic her. ball? No, it's a one on one it's match. It's a one on one she's match. She's estimating it's a $40,000 project. I see. Okay. So, so the one on one match. So if it was 45, yeah. she'd need a little more. Gotcha. Okay. Well, so if, have, help me with grants here if you've got a half a minute. If you apply for $30,000 for a grant and you need 20, you just don't take the rest, is that correct? That's correct. Mm -hmm. So if we apply for 30, which is a matching grant, mm -hmm. and so that would mean a $60,000 project, but let's say then the project does in fact come in at 40, we only accept 20 from the grant. Correct. Okay. And then does, you, does the amount you apply for affect the possibility whether you might get it or not? Not with these grants. This one it doesn't, some of them they do. They look for a higher match. They like the ones that are matching like 70% versus 50% in some of them, but these don't. I mean, I think your best bet is to go in with a $60,000 proposed budget, and then if you only spend 40, when you close the grant out, you release the rest of the money back to the state to okay. do something else. For but we need two quotes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't see Amy asking a contractor to pad a quote. No, we wouldn't want that. No. So, so when maybe you get the quotes, then get you guys the can make the determination whether you apply for okay. 20, 25, or 30. Okay. I mean, the quotes are going to get you pretty close to where you need to be. Right. Right? So you're going to know at that point whether your architect's off base, as you know, Pat mentioned, maybe, maybe he's all not up to time, I don't know what the current rates are. Right. So that gives you a little flexibility. I mean, I mean, I'd be comfortable with that. You guys get your quotes and see what you are, and up to thirty, right? Sometimes okay. you bid them too. Pardon me. Sometimes you can actually bid the work out instead of just going for a quote, and then you tie them in with a period of time, usually up to three months. Right. We don't really have the contract. I don't know how much time we have to go actually get a bid. This has to be in next week, two weeks. You're going to get a bid in two weeks. No. Yeah. So, um, not from any reputable contractors. <laughs> so, if you authorize the library to apply for thirty thousand dollars, or to, to. to go for so grant, up to thirty thousand mm -hmm. dollars, then do we also have your assurance that you will release ten from the capital funds? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Okay. I think you're, you know, if you pull this off, and I think that would be money well invested at that point if you were to secure that grant and get the bathroom fixed, and then we'll, you know, we can look at the dome situation, you mm -hmm. know, down the road a little bit here. Dome, da dome, dome. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you want to make a motion to that effect? Sure. 
I really said I didn't need it. <laughs> <laughs> Up to $30,000, and the town will agree to provide the other 10 from the Capital. capital budget okay, right. provided. Up to 10000 oh, yes. match from right. the capital budget. Right. So if we get that wordsmith correctly, nice. yep. you got it over there? You got it over here. Okay. Someone needs to second. There you go. Matt's on it. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Can I ask Thank an you. additional question? Yep. Um, the lift, I'm just curious. It's was it done. a totally new lift, or is it? Yeah, did you have to rearrange it, or what it's was? It's a new lift. New it's lift. in the same spot. It same. is silent. Come check it out. Just quiet and a new one. All day long. I was just curious why it had to be. Where's Pat? <laughs> <laughs> Look at the library. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. All it's a town building, though, so you can't have alcohol there. <laughs> Good deal. Go get them. During. <laughs> we could change that policy. Yeah. Except on the lift of the library. <laughs> <laughs> Just stop in between floors and go. <laughs> Hope it's broke. Alrighty. Great. Great progress. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Sally. Your added items are under other business, right? Yes. All other okay. under business. Uh, so we will now move to other business. The easiest of all the items to consider are the um, two forms from VTrans. These are the ones that are confirming, one, that the town of Randolph receives more than $300 per mile on any one of its class one, class two, class three roads, which we do. And the other is to confirm that the town is in compliance with the road and bridge standards, uh, which we are in compliance. So the board order motion to approve these two forms, we could have them sign and apply for the grant. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And what's the purpose of the first one? Yeah. Motion carries. Oh, uh, just to confirm that, we receive at least $300 per mile of class, from class one state. from the state. Yeah. The next item that would be easily easy to review would be the local emergency management plan. This is the first year that the state uh, is um, using what's called the local emergency management plan. The previous iterations were the local emergency operations plan. What we've done is um, updated all the information from our previous plans contact information for law enforcement, um, fire personnel, our emergency management director and coordinator are listed on here. It lists the items that we have available in terms of equipment. Um, also provides a list of all of our sensitive populations, uh, such as Randolph House, local uh, children facilities. Um, also provides information on where our emergency operations center is located as well as contact information for the select board. So um, if the board were to approve this plan, we could then send it to the Regional Planning Commission, which has already reviewed it and has confirmed that it meets all of their required criteria. So I think that, that I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. So I think underneath the Village Fire Station, as equipment notes, may be of value to add the hazmat room that we have there for. Oh, OK. Uh, contaminants and wash capability. Okay, that's that. Right. So dec hazmat decon. Yeah, right. Decon. Okay. Um, what I could do is, if the board was interested in making a motion to approve the local emergency management plan, it could make it contingent on my adding the. Uh, hazmat decontamination at the Randolph Village Fire Station. Or any other items that may be missing that you could see. Okay. So moved. Thank you. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? carries. Yes, 
Assembly permit application? Uh, yes, sir. So only double duty with minutes today. Um, <laughs> uh, we had a request to add uh, an assembly permit by uh, um, uh, staff and also a uh, member of the community that works with the hub for two events. They, although it's on the same assembly permit, they are technically separate events, uh, but we thought just the mainstream maybe we put it onto one. Uh, the first event is a Easter egg, a springtime Easter egg hunt and funny bunny 5k walk and run. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, those are two events. The first one is a springtime Easter egg hunt at, um, at the park. And the second event is a funny bunny 5k walk and run. Um, we have Heidi here from the rec department and she can speak to the springtime Easter egg hunt. Yeah, the, actually, the run is be first at 8 a.m. Um, Zach Friedman um, and the roster crew will be organizing that. It's just a small three mile, it's five, five, it's two and a half back. It all depends on the weather, if we stay on the road or if we hit some trails. It does look like it's gonna be kind of rainy. So I think um, he will stick to the, the road. Um, and then after that, um, it's only about a 45 minute run or walk. And then at 10, we'll have our hunt. Um, we have separated different areas for the hunt. So a one ball field for the zero to four, another ball field for five to seven, and then a little bit into the disc golf for the eight and up. So they have to at least hunt a little bit harder. Um, so we had um, the senior center uh, participated on Wednesday. So they helped us clean all the aids that were donated from the thrift store. Um, they helped us stuff um, candies from donations from the Shaw's market. So that was a little a fun morning to spend at the senior center. Um, and we have another um, stuffing party also at the ice rink and then we'll be ready to go just to get people out there again and get people out of their houses after a long winter. Um, hoping that spring is back, you know, here and um, something fun for the whole family. Uh, coming up just for a little bit. I'm not sure spring is here yet though. I'm hoping. Here. <laughs> yeah, this is another person. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it's all the blizzard today. I appreciate it not yeah. being over there. We need to go another week. <laughs> <laughs> I know baseball's eager to get out there, so oh, yeah. you know we're we're trying we're to give up on the sugaring. Yeah, yeah. Well, 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 <laughs> you guys can get out there. All right. So I don't see any issues with this. We've met all the right criteria, I'm assuming. So. There are some, some signatures. Elbow. There are yeah. some signatures. There, there, there was, uh, there were some recommendations made by the sheriff's department. Okay. Um, so the sheriff's department was hoping that the, if the board were inclined to approve the permit, pending their recommendations, and then also uh, capturing the signatures that remain mm -hmm. on the permit. I believe this copy that was this copy in your hands was printed before. Um, uh, fire chief in the village came in to sign the actual form. So if I'm not mistaken, he's already signed this form. It's just, it just hasn't, this was printed Fine. before. Right, you guys, I mean, you, you, you're, you're dotting your I's crossing your T's here, right? Yeah, the sheriff um, met with, with Zach and um, talked about certain um, intersections on Main Street. And so uh, Zach's crew, Rasta, will be on every single uh, intersection. We'll be there plus signage and all that stuff. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, their trail doesn't show Main Street. There's two maps. Yeah, there's one on the front and one on the back. And it's dark. He sent me, yeah. So that one, the dark one, that's the road one that you have right now in front of you. So it's like going up to Gifford and back. Mm -hmm. And then the back one, that one is the the trail ones, which probably won't happen because it's, it's gonna because it's gonna rain a little bit. So are they gonna keep the runners to one side yeah. for yeah, not just the last people? Yeah, they're gonna stagger the times and stuff. And a lot more of the parents that are coming for the egg, they're gonna have the walk. They're gonna be walking. <laughs> okay, but we're not closing the road for no, those. No, so we're gonna have to no, somehow keep yeah. people. No, no, yeah, it's on the sidewalks. Oh, on the sidewalk. Yeah. Yeah. 
Perfect. Yeah. And there will be volunteers on hand yeah, to make sure all that. Yeah, there will be volunteers all through the intersection, especially mm -hmm. at the turnaround oh, and the back. <laughs> yeah, no, no closing, nothing. <laughs> I'm good with it. I make a motion to approve that assembly permit for both the Easter egg hunt and the bunny bunny walk. Does that mean everybody has to deck to get dressed? I know, that's what I was like. I think Zach should dress up. <laughs> that's what I was wondering. So we're going to dress up, right? So there's my motion. We will have a bunny out there. Is that included in the motion? Zach dressing up. We no, I'm not going to make any attention to the pun and dressing up as the bunny. So. <laughs> you can tell him that. I'll tell him that. I think you should. You should. You're on board? Tell him that. You're seconded it right? Sure. Oh, yeah. that. so. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Any other, other business? Okay. We've got Ron here. Can you, you, would you like to chat about anything? Uh, I see you over in the corner. I, uh, I, I uh, was under the impression we were uh, setting up a meeting for tomorrow, and I thought it was going to come on your agenda tonight. So mm -hmm. I figured I'd just make myself available in case there was anything I could contribute. Okay. There is an item on my in my manager's report that I was hoping to address. Um, Regarding that? Well, just give a general update in general and then present an option to the board if they were okay. interested. In. Um, and the option is that I'm scheduled to meet with Werber tomorrow. And so the option is if any board members were interested in Wherever participating in the meeting. Chandler? Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Chandler? with Chandler. Yes. So I'm, I'm scheduled a meeting with Chandler and I uh, was wondering if okay. any board members, you and if any board member uh, interested in participating, you're welcome to welcome to join. That meeting. What time is it? Meeting is at 3.30? Oh, what we oh, have no, no. That's too early. That's too early. Yeah, I thought it was more like 5.30. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't it? I'd be interested if it's 5.30. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I have it down as 3.30. Yeah, I have it down as 5.30. Does that work for you? Or is that too late? <laughs> no. So what's, what's the... The purpose of the meeting? purpose of the meeting is to discuss uh, the proposed agreement between, or a proposed agreement between Chandler and the town. The idea is to be able to have a conversation about the existing relationship, past relationship, and the relationship going forward. Um, but I believe, um, Ron, you had a preference of meeting earlier? Um, yeah, I think, I think early works well for me, but you had a conflict. Uh, you got something at the high school. I did. Um, it's actually much later now than it was before. Early. I mean, I, we can, I'm flexible because I left. I'm, I'm open the whole afternoon, so yeah. whatever. I believe, I believe Nate Cleveland is available from 4:30 on. Okay. Works for me. I, I mean, like I said, I'm flexible. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. If any board members interested, meetings at 4:30. Okay. Yeah. As long as we're not more than Make sure there's not more than two coming. Yeah. So, yeah. coming? Oh, that's fine. I'm good for that. I mean, it's fine. Okay. Okay. We'll report back to you. Where are we meeting, by the way? Right. Here? Absolutely. To meet here. To meet here. Yeah. Yeah. What's the final time? I'm sorry. Uh, 4.30. 4.30. 4 4 Let me change that. What else you got in the manager's report? Ooh, I, didn't find my notes. I didn't mean to jump ahead of you there, but it's okay. it wasn't on the agenda, <laughs> and I saw it on the back there. I'm like, are we going to get to this? Or? You, guys, you guys gave me a nice, relaxing visit. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> okay. See you guys tomorrow. Perfect. Tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, a few items. Uh, first is um, discussions with Chandler, uh, which we just talked about. Uh, the second item is... Um, a uh, directive that the voters gave to the town manager select board at last town meeting, and that was to commence a conversation with the Randolph Center Fire Department. We've started that conversation. We've had the very first meeting. Uh, the meeting went very well. Uh, we're hoping to have several more conversations as the year uh, continues and ultimately have a report to the voters at next town meeting. Um, there was no decisions made at the most recent meeting other than just to continue to have the conversation, but. It, it sounded like we were moving in the right direction, at the very least one that would be favorable for at some point for the board to consider. Um, we did recently receive um, an additional almost $100,000 from our insurance provider. We found out that some of their record keeping for reconstruction of the fire department included materials that were less than what we actually had. 
So they gave us uh, the difference in the material items, so we will receive an additional $100,000 within the next uh, two to three weeks. Some of their staff members who review these materials are on vacation, so once they return, they'll issue us a check. What does that bring us up to for reimbursement? Uh, I don't have a total amount, but I know they've given us, I believe it was, I don't want to give you the wrong information, but um, there's a considerable amount that they've reimbursed us for our loss, but there's also an, a considerable amount that we are negotiating for um, that they feel is different from what we feel. So it's an ongoing conversation. And I don't have the exact total yeah, amount. I'll stop in. Uh, today we realized that they, well, we didn't realize it was reported to us and was confirmed by Highway that we have a sinkhole on Central Street near Heading. Uh, the hole is going to be addressed first thing tomorrow. We couldn't do it today because we require uh, the presence of Duke Safe. So they will be there tomorrow morning and we'll try to resolve the issue then. We performed a, an internal audit of a water wastewater plant grant that we received from the USDA. Uh, that was a part of an ongoing effort to use as much of the grant as possible. We realized that over the last three years, uh, over $100,000 of project costs had not, be, had not been credited to the grant, so we sent them a list of all the things that we had spent. They're gonna send us a check, um, so roughly about $120,000 or so. Thanks for the pump. Uh, that's in addition to it's the addition yeah, to in that addition pump. to that pump. So mm -hmm. uh, the pump that the, the board approved that we replaced, I think it was one of the centrifuge. Right, things. centrifuge pump. That's all uh, separate from this. This is other things that we have purchased over the last few years of just because mm -hmm. of so staff we transition. Spend, yeah, we just kind of lost track of it. That, like, exactly. So nice. More revenue coming in. This have to do with the building the plant or something. something with building the plant. Yeah. With some of the items, and since then also with items that were eligible for purchase through maintenance of the plant. So, yeah. Good. Uh, we've had a challenging winter, as you all know. Uh, our budget for salt uh, exceeded what we had budgeted. We just it's a crapshoot sometimes, and this year we spent more than was budgeted. It's um, extremely icy winter. It was a challenge. Uh, we're hoping to do better next year, and we're hoping to not have as much ice thawing and melting and warming and melting and freezing again. Uh, we continue our conversation with the state regarding manganese. Um, we, per the board's suggestion a few weeks ago or a few months ago, we're going to start working on a sheet that we can include in our bills that include the amount of manganese that people consume through their multivitamins, through their food, as opposed to random water. I think once people see the comparison, they're going to realize that the state isn't necessarily protecting health as opposed to just regulating for the sake of regulating. So that may create other problems for us, but it'll bring some light into the issue for the community. Uh, we staff have started a conversation with one of our local residents, uh, Tom Ayers. Um, we've explored the possibility, to, uh, an item that I shared with the board uh, in the past is potentially creating a arts and culture commission so that we could capture uh, the resources or, or the assistance of a lot of our local artists. Um, Tom Ayers is very interested in if the select board were to choose to create an arts and culture committee or commission, he would very much like to be a part of the birth process, the building it and try to capture as much grant um, funding that there is through the arts as possible so we can bring more arts and culture to the town. Um, Tom, uh, plans to be here next meeting during public comment to share more about what his thoughts are on creating this group. And lastly, we have two new staff members that uh, started within the last month, our Director of Economic Development, and also not yet full-time, but our new Finance Director. Uh, both have been plugging away and uh, learning the, the ropes and Randolph. Our new Economic Development Director has met with all the businesses and is started those conversations as well with partners in the state. Our finance director has started to clean up many issues that uh, have existed with our finances over the years and um, we are very lucky to have a, a CPA on, on staff that's able to actually do a lot of things that uh, for many different reasons we were not able to do. Um, so he's, um, he's doing a good job so far and he will start full time next week. Great. Awesome. And so does everybody's taxes are filed? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
Um, and that's, uh, that's it for the manager's report for now. Thank <clears throat> you.